Okay, hi there. Welcome to the fifth session in our short course in behavioral economics. This is a Head Start course designed for year 11 students during the summer as they transition from their GCSEs to hopefully starting the study of the wonderful subject of economics. And I'm providing six sessions for you, many videos as part of that. Uh, we've looked at rationality, irrationality, humans and their biases. We did a session on the theory of nudge, behavioral nudges. And in the last session, we did uh, a look at the obesity epidemic and thinking about the kind of nudges that might be used to address that. In this fifth lesson, we're going to be having two videos thinking about behavioural economics applied to gambling addiction in the UK particularly. Then I'll do a special session on behavioural economics at the movies, thinking about some clips that might illustrate nicely some important behavioural economics concepts. Gambling is obviously a big industry. It employs tens of thousands of people both in the UK and across the world. Uh, the latest data, the latest evidence that I can find for 2019 suggests that uh, there are well over 2 million at-risk gamblers in the UK uh, and uh, perhaps as many as half a million problem gamblers with an even bigger uh, issue to address. There's been a big surge in online betting in the UK, now estimated to be one third of the value of all UK gambling. And I found some evidence that one in 10 gamblers with a mobile phone report in a survey that they gamble whilst commuting. Last year, just under half of people in surveys said that they gambled at least once in the last four weeks. What we've seen is a, a, is a reduction in the number of betting shops. The number of shops on the high street has declined. And you can see that from this chart showing from 2011 through to 2019 that the number of betting shops decline from just over 9,000 to 8,300. 8, so quite a quite a steep fall, although the, the y-axis there has been shortened. But remote online gambling, uh, remote betting on casinos, uh, what have you, poker, etc., that has surged quite a bit. Uh, this chart shows gross gambling yield, basically the revenue uh, net of operating costs for the industry. And you can see the surge in remote betting, bingo casino gambling. Uh, in part, that surge from 2015 was the result of the online remote betting sector coming under the orbit of the regulators. So they had to report their revenues much more precisely. But undoubtedly, there has been a big increase uh, in, in remote betting. According to the latest survey evidence that I could find, around 37% of people in the UK are non-gamblers. About 58% are recreational gamblers. So adding that up, you know, 85%, uh, sorry, 95%, significant number. And then you have uh, a group of at-risk gamblers, oftentimes feeling guilty about their losses, betting perhaps more than they can afford. And then a small, uh, very small minority, but a significant number of people who are defined as, as problem gamblers. And we know that there are externalities, social consequences, from this. Gambling related harms can include financial instability for the people concerned, the disruption, the erosion, the ending of partnerships and uh, family relationships, and of course the mental mental stress, the ill health that can come, physical and mental health that can come from a gambling addiction. So these are important issues. Uh, here are two recent newspaper headlines. The government's been urged, has urged gambling companies to work harder to stop vulnerable people spiralling into addiction to online casino games. And a big worry, actually, during the coronavirus pandemic, that there will be, as people are locked at home, essentially, in lockdown, their restrictions are, are, are um, limited. The big fear is that the pandemic has actually caused a surge in, in online gambling at home and an, an increase in addiction. So these are important, important topics. One of the big topical questions has been the, the use of so-called high-speed electronic slot machines. They're also known as fixed odds betting terminals, dubbed the crack cocaine of gambling. A huge surge in those in use in betting shops around the country. Now, I think with, when it comes to gambling, one, if one thinks about behavioural aspects, uh, I was just trying to sort of say, well, can I capture six examples of where behavioural biases, psychological biases, an impact on gambling behaviour. One is the idea of mental accounting. 
that the money gambled online often doesn't feel real. You're not you're not handing over cash when you make a, a bet, for example, in a betting shop or at the horse races. And that's really a mental accounting that oftentimes you gamble more when you're sent once or twice removed from handing cash over. A really important bias is loss aversion. Gamblers often chase their losses. They they don't want to realise a loss because the pain of a loss is much bigger than the the benefit of a gain and oftentimes they chase their losses in search of recovering their losses and end up in more debt. A very important concept in behavioural economics is the concept of bounded rationality. Increasingly bets are complex, made up of different components, accumulators, all that kind of stuff and and a lot of people really do find it very hard to process the risk of a complex bet. They can't be expected to make fully rational decisions. Then there's herd behaviour. Many gamblers operate within similar social networks and gamblers mix with gamblers and they don't necessarily think they're over gambling in that sense. And then a couple of things. One is something called anchoring. We've come, we come across that in our course. So, for example, betting companies may offer to match a bet of a certain size. If you bet £10 on this event, we'll match it for you. That's a kind of anchoring effect. Uh, if you bet £25 on something, we'll match it. So matching bets is quite a commercially successful way of getting people to bet a bit more so too by the way is the power of that word free if people think they're getting a free bet sign up to this betting organization create an account and we'll offer you a 10 pound free bet that has a significant psychological effect on many people bounded rationality bounded rationality where the decision Making ability of us as humans is limited by our computational power and also crucially by information gaps. We find it very hard to get all the information about the costs and benefits of what we're doing. Now in the second video in the session we're going to turn our attention to nudge and think about what nudges might be used to address addiction in gambling in the UK. I've, I've taught this lesson to my students and I want to share with you some of their ideas as well as some of my own, and I'm sure you'll have your own ideas as to which behavioural nudges we could use.